A few months ago, some German was spoken on America's Got Talent, the show in which American performers are judged by a Brit, a Canadian, a Colombian and a German. And this naturally caught my attention. Not just the German that was spoken, but the act itself, because the contestant had a pretty unique skill. So let's take a look at what happened. And because this is a channel dedicated to all things German, we will then break down the German that was spoken and translate it into English. The contestant in question was Emily Bland, who announced that she was going to sing, citing Garth Brooks as her idol. And so it was a bit of a surprise for the judges and the audience when she actually did sound like Garth Brooks. Baby, lock the door and turn the lights down low. Play some music that is soft and slow. But then she revealed that she was in fact lip syncing to her husband, who was just off stage. So, uh, how are you guys doing? And that is just where it started, because it turns out that she can instantly synchronize her lip movements to anything anyone says, as she proceeded to demonstrate on the judges. You are so much better looking in real life. So when it came to Heidi Klum, she did it in German, a language that Bland claims not to know. Also am liebsten würde ich da sitzen, wo du sitzt und du würdest da sein, wo ich bin, dann wird das Ganze viel lustiger. Oh my god, that looks good! I have no clue what I just said. Howie Mandel called this improvisational lip sync, noting that she was able to perfectly time her lip movements even though she had no idea what anyone was going to say. My instinct was to assume that this might be a form of echolalia or echopraxia. Echolalia is the urge to repeat what somebody has said, and echopraxia is the urge to copy somebody else's body movements, as explained here by British impressionist Jan Ravens. I've got an interesting sort of Greek type word for something that I do sometimes where I can't help the sort of urge to do an impression of somebody. And sometimes if somebody's got like a, a limp or a bit of a funny walk, I kind of want to go yes. along with it, which is a terrible thing to do. And apparently when you do this thing of wanting to take on somebody's limp in an inappropriate way, it's called echopraxia. Oh, and if, and if you and if you do it uh, with words, we're trying to imitate a person sort of verbally. It's echolalia. In adults, these are usually considered symptoms of some neurological disorder, such as, for example, Tourette's. And so I would really love to know whether Emily Bland experiences this as an urge, like Jan Ravens, or if it's a skill that she's learned and can switch on and off at will. Anyway, it is impressive, and I'm with Sofia Vergara on this. It's really good. I don't know for what, but it's really good. Hey. But let's take a look at the German sentence that Heidi Klum threw at the contestant. Also, am liebsten würde ich da sitzen, wo du sitzt, und du würdest da sein, wo ich bin, dann wird das Ganze viel lustiger. Now, she is speaking very fast, deliberately to try to push Bland to the limit, and this has one or two side effects. First, she falters slightly at the start, hesitates, and repeats a word. Second, if I've correctly understood everything that she says, she actually makes a grammatical mistake. This is quite common in spontaneous speech. Typically, we begin a sentence not knowing how it will end, and we end a sentence forgetting how it began, which is why I always write a script for my videos. Try secretly recording a conversation with one of your best friends about a subject that you're both really interested in, and then try to transcribe it exactly. You'll probably find that most of your sentences aren't even complete sentences. So this is what I think she said, and if so, then there is a verb missing at the end. I'm going to guess that this is the word. Now let's hear it again. Also am liebsten würde ich da sitzen, wo du sitzt, und du würdest da sein, wo ich bin, dann wird das Ganze viel lustiger. So let's break this down and then translate it. The first word also is just one of those filler words used to buy time, like the English well. This is followed by the phrase am liebsten würde ich, although Heidi actually contracts the würde to würd, which is normal in colloquial speech. This phrase is used to indicate that what you are about to describe is what you would most like to happen. Am liebsten can sometimes be translated as something like preferably. And then we have würde, which intermediate students of German should recognize as the subjunctive mood. What's the subjunctive mood? Well, it's a form of the verb used to talk about things that are hypothetical or not real. 
Am liebsten würde ich Wein trinken. I would much rather be drinking wine. But I'm not drinking wine. Mm. <coughs> Most of the rest is pretty straightforward, or should be if you are at least an intermediate student of German, until we get to the word damit, which can basically be translated as in order that or so that. At least I'm pretty sure that's the word she says, but if so, then her sentence is incomplete. As she says it, it means in order that everything much funnier. So I think we do need an extra verb here, and I'm going to guess wird, which can roughly be translated as becomes. In English, we wouldn't say becomes in this context, but in German it's important to emphasize the fact that we want to transform something that is quite funny into something that is very funny, and using the word wird here actually emphasizes that transformation. So here it is. This is what Heidi Klum said. This is a direct word-for-word -word translation, and this is what we would actually say if we were speaking English. Because when we translate, we never do it word-for-word. -word. We always aim for what a native speaker would normally say in that situation. What's the matter? Lily? Seriously, Lily. Goodbye.